It's a great pleasure to be back for Cosmotica from home this year. And uh, this time I'm going to talk about some recent work I did with my wonderful collaborators, Gillian Pimentel and Anna Trucaro. It's called Bootstrapping Multifield Inflation. It's going to be a theoretical talk, but I want to start with some uh, observational motivation. Is that if we enter a data-oriented conference on primordial causality, then what we hear most is that the leading expert in this area are mainly looking at one single parameter. It's called FNL. And this FNL is the one that is associated with the local answers or the local shape of primordial causality. And this is believed to be the signature of multi-field inflation. And indeed, in the past uh, about 20 years, we have already gained uh, uh, tighter and tighter constraints on the local non-gold sending. Like this is the uh, arrow bar from W, um, um, FNL local from W map to Planck. And we can see the arrow bar is becoming smaller and smaller. And then now the latest result from Planck is plus minus five. Then in the next decade also, we will have uh, more and more uh, data from the larger scale structure surveys, like from Euclid, DASI, LS, ST, SphereX, and so on. There will be much tighter constraints on this local FNL parameter. And we in, uh, expect uh, in the near future, it will be quite important to our, for us to uh, get some uh, theoretical understanding about the, uh, the signature of multi-field inflation. And this is uh, what uh, uh, we plan to do in this work. Um, we will use the newly developed bootstrap method to revisit this old topic. And so in this work, we aim to uh, identify what is a true local shape from multi-field inflation, and also um, show what was missed in the previous computations. And after that, we'll be able to provide a classification of multi-field constant with new shapes. And here's the plan of the talk. I will first briefly review the bootstrap measure, and then I will turn to discuss some technical aspect. It's called um, how to deal with the error divergences in the cosmological bootstrap. And after that, I will provide this classification of the multi-field non-consenting, and in the end, there will be a summary. Uh, let me begin with the traditional approach where we compute the cosmological correlation functions. And this could be the informalism, the informalism, or the transport method. So the basic idea here is that, uh, okay, let me, uh, so basically this is the uh, space-time diagram for cosmic gain inflation. And the duration of inflation can be seen as a, a bulk of the quantity zero, the center space time. Then the end of inflation corresponds to the future boundary of the center space time um, when the conformal time it goes to zero. And the traditional approach is to track the time evolution um, of specific interactions based on models. And uh, this is a more, uh, quite a powerful approach. We have been doing this for about 20 years. But usually this approach is quite model dependent since we need to specify a model first before we do the computation. And it's also quite hard since this type of computation normally um, needs to do some complicated time intervals. And for the cosmological bootstrap, the basic idea is to derive cosmological uh, correlators from symmetries, locality, and, and the unitarity, this kind of fundamental principles. So basically we can uh, forget about the time evolution during inflation, and we just focus on the final observables. And this is a so-called boundary perspective. We can just look at the correlation functions defined at the end of inflation on the future boundary of the center space time. And this is a model independent, uh, independent approach, and uh, it also gives us very powerful computational tools. Here, I'm not going to do, uh, talk about the technical details of the, bo of the bootstrap measures. Um, but there were already many interesting talks on cosmological from home, like the one in 2021 by my collaborator, Guy Pimentel, and also by a group of colleagues last year, including myself. Um, next, I, I will uh, briefly um, reveal a little bit uh, the uh, current understanding of primordial non causality. Normally, if we assume that inflation is nearly, the theory is nearly scale environment, and everything is weakly coupled such that we can just look at the tree level leading on the diagram. Then there are three different classes of uh, signals for primordial non causality. The first one is from single field inflation and it corresponds to this contact diagram. Then the, the non causality signal, the bias spectrum is generated by the self interaction or the inflation field. 
Um, then we, the second class corresponds to cosmological collider. We may have some intermediate massive states. And then we have the third class is multi-field inflation where we could have some additional line scatters in addition to the inflated field. And the basic observable here is a parameter bias spectrum, which is a Fourier transformation of the three-part correlation function. There are two important things in this parameter bias spectrum. One is the size parameter f and l, then it's a shift function s, which is a function of three more Fourier mode k1, k2, k3. And it contains a lot of information about uh, um, parameter physics. And uh, uh, the, for the first case, the bootstrap analysis was performed by the so-called bootstrap bootstrap. And the standard understanding there is that we could uh, find all the possible equilateral type non-causality from single field inflation. And then for the second case, um, the cosmological collider physics, or we did the bootstrap analysis last year and in this work called Bootstrap Cosmological Collider Bootstrap. And uh, there was a talk last year by me on cosmological from home, and also there is a relevant work by Sebastian and Sardor. Um, now we can see that the, the first case and the second case has been success, have been successfully bootstrapped. We are left with the last case, multi-field inflation. And the, the traditional approach to study multi-field inflation is that to use a separate universe approximation. And this could be the Dutton formalism or the transfer measure. Um, so the question I want to ask is that, is this computation, is this approximation complete or, or does it miss anything? And uh, I want to re-examine this re uh, computation in the bootstrap method. So when we talk about multi-phase inflation, normally what we have in mind is that it's like Pandora's box. There are too many possibilities. And normally the predictions there are model dependent and we don't have a unifying thing to, um, to say about the signatures of multi-field models. Um, however, if we look at one important aspect of the multi-field inflation, which is a multi-field conversion process, then we do still find some universal behavior. Let's say that here we decompose the field fluctuations into these two different types. The first one is the adiabatic perturbation phi, which is the one along the inflation trajectory. Then we also have the isochorture perturbation sigma, which is the one orthogonal to the inflation trajectory. Um, then after this decomposition, we found the interactions between these two different type of perturbations. Um, the leading interactions would, taken, would take this um, unified form. So basically we have this phi dot sigma linear mixing and uh, this d mu phi square sigma cubic vertex. And the, the super horizon uh, conversion process, the multi field conversion is mainly due to this final sigma linear mixing. So basically, sigma field due to final sigma, uh, this quadratic interaction, sigma field will source the growth of the zeta field on the super horizon scales. And uh, uh, then a more uh, accurate description about this super horizon growth of the curvature perturbation zeta in multi field inflation can be. Um, can be achieved by considering this so-called mixed propagator curly k. So basically, this mixed propagator describes this uh, this partial this part of the Feynman diagram. So uh, there is a sigma field that com uh, propagates from one time to another, and then it converts to the inflaton fluctuation through this final sigma linear mixing, and then the inflaton fluctuation travels to the end of inflation. So basically, this mixed propagator would have this error divergent behavior if the end of inflation it not goes to zero. And then here it corresponds to this logarithmic growth, this log, log singularity. And so basically, basically this logarithmic growth is the super horizon growth of the correlation perturbation zeta in the multi-field analysis. And now uh, if we want to bootstrap the multi-field signal, what we need to achieve is to understand how to deal with the error divergences in the cosmological cosmor bootstrap. Let's look at one simple example here. Uh, this is the three-point scalar state function in the cosmological bootstrap. And here is a three-point correlator with two conformally coupled scalar very phi and uh, one of the linear mixing, this mix propagator from sigma to phi to the inflated field phi. This is phi is a massless scalar. And then uh, we call this this scalar state function i hat, which 
depends on the momentum ratio u, which is uh, uh, this k3 over k1 plus k2. Then in the bootstrap analysis, when the sigma field is messy, then we found that this correlation function is IR finite. And then what we normally do in the bootstrap is to derive the conformal world identities uh, for this three-point scalar state function. And then uh, we can uh, solve this differential equation, this world identity, and then we derive the full analytical result. However, if a sigma field is massless, then we found that this correlation function becomes IR divergent. And here, the conformal wild identity becomes the one with some CFT anomalies. And this anomalies term will contribute to a non-trivial non source term. Um, and uh, it's related to the IR cutoff, which corresponds to the end of inflation internode. And now we need to uh, solve this modified differential equation and for this massless exchange diagram for the scalar state function. And then after that, we can use the uh, uh, we shifting approach to map this scarcity function to the uh, inflation bias spectrum, which corresponds to this massless exchange diagram. And then we derive the true local shape from the decider bootstrap method. Before I show the full result here, uh, I want to point it out that this massless exchange correspond to, correspond, corresponds to the minimal setup for multi field inflation, but this diagram was missed in the previous computations. And then here is a full shape result. And for comparison here, I also put the simplest local answers here. And we can see this full shape is more complicated than the simple local answers. And now we have uh, these logarithmic functions. And there are two types of log functions. The first one we call the, the logarithmic KT pole. And here KT is K1 plus K2 plus K3. And this comes from the cubic vertex here. And then we also have the logarithmic k1, k2, k3 pole. And this comes from the linear mixing and this phi dot sigma here. And now the important question for us is to understand what was missed in the previous data or transport computations. So uh, let's take the data formalism for example. Normally we look at a local patch of the universe during inflation and we compute the number of efforts from some initial flat slice and t star to the common slice and t naught towards the unknown inflation. Then the coverage perturbation could be seen and the differences in the number of efforts um, from this local patch of the universe with the one uh, for the uh, background universe. And then we can do the delta N expansion to write it as an, in terms of initial field fluctuations. And then so far so good. Um, then the next important thing is about this initial field fluctuations. They are the ones different and uh, they start right after horizon exit. So question is, are they just free scatters? Uh, actually, they are not in multi-field inflation. Um, for example, here, uh, if we just look at the first case we considered with this phi dot sigma linear mixing, and uh, this is the interaction that is important for the conversion process. So if there is conversion, then there must be this final sigma linear mixing. And then this final sigma would already uh, deform, would already modify the bunch Davis mode function before horizon accent. And here is a result from the mix propagator here. And we can see there is a, this logarithmic deformation from the bunch Davis mode function before horizon accent. And and that was what is missed in the uh, previous computation. Basically, in the previous case, um, it was still the bunch Davis mode function for free scatter that was used in the data formalism computation for this initial field fluctuations. And uh, this difference may uh, lead to the difference here between this full shape function and also the one in the local answers. Okay. Um, after that, now we can release the full power of the bootstrap to consider the classification of different type of multi-field knockout sentences. Um, the first thing we can discuss is that uh, we can consider arbitrary cubic interactions here um, for phi and sigma field with a different sound speed, cs and c sigma, but the quadratic interaction is still phi dot sigma. So in this case, the error divergence would remain. And uh, then what we find is that uh, the, the shape still looks like the local shape. 
So basically, if we have R divergence, then the resulting bispectral shape will still look like local, like a, what I've shown is two different, uh, two different uh, plots. So for different type of signals, uh, bispectral shapes, and uh, it still looks quite close to the local answers here. Uh, however, if we consider the linear mixing with higher derivatives, like phi tau dot sigma, phi tau sigma dot, and so on, then the correlators in the end becomes IR finite. And in this case, um, we have different sound speed, the sound speed for the infrared field, CS, and sound speed for the sigma field, C sigma, and so on. Then um, the shear function becomes uh, dependent on the different sound speed ratios. So basically, the sound speed ratio would control the peak or the location of the peak or in the, for the shear function. Then by tuning the sound speed ratios, we can change uh, the location of the peak uh, for the bispectral shape. And uh, here it provides a new class of shapes called multi-speed non consent And here we can see that um, the shape function interpolates between the standard uh, equilateral shape and the standard local shape. And this could be something interesting for upcoming observational surveys. Uh, okay, now uh, uh, this, to, this is the end of my talk and this is the last slide I want to just summarize our bootstrap efforts in the past several years, uh, which is to um, identify the new signatures of uh, new physics during inflation. And here we consider three different type of scenarios for the self interaction of the inflation in single field inflation, then for cosmological collider, and for multi field inflation. And the bootstrap could tell us general results and also some new phenomenology. Okay, I will stop here. Thanks.